Hey, welcome back to Call for Help. Becky Worley here. Have you ever thought about going wireless with your PDA? Imagine how convenient it would be to access the Internet from, well, just about anywhere. Well, Richard Baguley, the senior associate editor from PC World, joins us to give his views on whether or not it's worth it to go wireless. And that seems to be the issue these days. Like, okay, we've heard the hype, everybody's seen the Palm 7, but it's so spendy. What do you think? It can be kind of expensive, but it does have some real benefits to it. There's a real benefit in being able to get the email wherever you are and just send emails in an emergency. But yes, it can be kind of expensive, so you need to know what you're getting into and fig figure out what you want to do. Now, you went out in the field and tested a lot of these devices. What was your general user experience? Well, user experience was uh, very cool. They certainly attract a lot of attention when you're using them. When, uh, Chick magnets. Of course, yeah. I'm, <laughs> I'm engaged. That's not an issue. Uh, but yes, they were certainly they were very useful, just being able to send email wherever you are. But they had some downsides as well. Uh, they're kind of limited in what they can do. You don't get the whole internet experience. You get a certain part of it. Well, let's go through and talk about these as we go. So first, let's talk with the, about the Palm 5. Now, this is kind of unique because this is really two pieces of equipment. Mm -hmm. Tell me about the modem that's on here. Well, this is the Palm 5, and what we have there is the uh, is, is a wireless modem, uh, uh, and, and that comes with it. You buy that as a separate a separate thing from on this guy. Ah. Uh, so that you buy the, the Palm, you then buy the wireless modem, which costs about $199, and you then pay a monthly fee to use their service. So that's the Palm. Yeah. And that's the modem right there. That's right. These yes. are two separate pieces of equipment. Mm -hmm. Got it. Okay. Well, let's move on to the Palm 7 because this is the one that a lot of people are familiar with. Um, give us some of the specs on this. What did you think about this particular piece? Well, the Palm 7 is, is a very nice system. It's an all-in-one system, so you don't have to worry about buying any other bits of equipment or anything like that. You just buy that, sign up with the Palm Net service, and you're off. So, yeah. Now, the point that you just made about the PalmNet service, that's the only wireless ISP that you can use the Palm 7 with, correct? That's correct, yes. Now, service and coverage can be an issue. We had a map that showed that there are really some kind of limitations about where you can get that coverage. That's right. Most of these services are available in most big cities, but once you go outside of the big cities, out in the countryside, you're probably pretty much on your own. What are some of the pricing options for the Palm 7? Well, the Palm 7, they have it uh, for unlimited use. They charge about $40 a month. Okay. You can get ones which cost slightly less, but you're limited in how much you can actually use the wireless services. Got it. One of the things that's created a lot of buzz around our office is the RIM pager. Now, Leo has gotten one of these, and Jim Louderback loves it. So tell us about this a little bit. Well, the idea of the, of the RIM BlackBerry is that they are really just a very simple service for doing, for doing email. Uh, that's really all they do. They have some other basic PDA functions. But if all you want to do is be able to send and receive email when you're on the road, then they're really very good. They're the only ones with a small keyboard on there so, as well, so that's a nice option. Now, this also has a different user interface because it uses a jog wheel with, I mean, you can press that and it's almost like double clicking it here, but it doesn't have the stylus the way that some of the others do. No, it's, you'll do it through the jog wheel or through the keyboard. Now, the keyboard is teeny beeny. It is kind of small. You do have to kind of peck out individual letters. You're certainly not going to write war and peace on this thing. So. Now, with the palms, you have some peripherals that you can plug these into and then you have a keyboard that's accessible to you. Is there anything like that with the rim? No, there isn't. It's just available for the palms and the pocket PCs. Okay. Now, the final one we have here is the Compact iPad. The sales of this uh, PDA have gone through the roof. It's a very popular PDA, yes. To the point where they don't even have any of the color LCD screens anymore and they're really limited in their production cycles. Mm -hmm. This is popular. What are the wireless options here? Well, the wireless option we're showing here is we're using an, uh, an air card, which is sort of like basically a cellular phone on a card on the rear of the thing. And that uses a, a cellular phone network to access the internet. So that's that option. That's a little more expensive. The combination of the, comp the, comp the iPad costs around $500. And then the air card and the, and the expansion pack you need cost about another $400 on top of that. Wow. So it's going to be expensive and slightly larger than the rest of them. Now, coverage is a little bit different here because this is a cell phone. You have a little bit more, a few more options. That's right. You, get, you can go wherever you can go with a cell phone network. So that gives you slightly wider options than some of the other ones. Now, the RIM also has a little bit more coverage options. We yeah, the, the RIM that. uses a pager network. So that covers a good chunk of the U USA, yes. What would you advise in terms of what kind of person should really think about using these kind of wireless PDAs for email and internet access? Well, uh, it's somebody who, who needs to have uh, email access on the road and needs to get hold of information. If you don't feel you're going to need that, then you probably don't need to do it because there's other ways to get hold of websites and that sort of thing. So systems like Avant Go will allow you to get, download a website and actually browse that on the road without having to go wireless. I was just going to mention that because we have that on the um, iPack now. Avant Go, every time that you, you designate what you want to know about a certain area yeah. or specific 
specific... Uh, you, you select certain websites that you want or certain bits of information, and every time you sync the PDA, it downloads them onto the PDA, and they're there ready for you. So I use this when I'm going home on the bus. I could just go download the news, read it on the way home. I use this on my Palm Pro, which I bought three years ago for 180 bucks, and I certainly don't feel any inclination to upgrade to anything that's this fancy schmancy because I'm not a road warrior. The color screen is very nice on these things. It's certainly useful if you're browsing maps, which is another great option of these mm. things. If you're trying to find a local ATM, or one of them has an option to find it near Starbucks, right. it's kind of easier to have a map that you can actually look at, and that's certainly easier to look at in color. Now let's go through some of the pros and cons, because I think it's important to kind of assess well, where we're at with all these pros. All right, number one, they're flexible, right? Mm -hmm. You can take them anywhere. Number two, you can send and receive email. That's a real perk, especially if you're a road warrior. You can get information all over the place, and that's flights, maps. You can use Vindigo to find out restaurants. You can also use this as an instant messenger, which is a great way to keep in touch with people, and it's absolutely synchronous, which is a nice thing for immediate delivery. And finally, the Palm gives you access to AOL. How does that work? Well, you have a little program which runs on the Palm 7, which is basically AOL Instant Messenger. So you can send instant messages immediately. Oh, their service. That is amazing. That's something yeah. I think I would really enjoy and like a lot. It's a, very, it's a very cool feature. I have to say, though, IM seems like there's a lot more goof-off functionality than actual business function. <laughs> it's, it's, yeah, there's a very, the argument. It's very cool to be able to say, email people from the bus saying, hello, I'm on the bus and I'm sending you an email. <laughs> Whether you actually need to do that is another question. That so. is an issue, isn't it? Well, let's go to the cons because we just gave it the big sell with the pros. So first up, it's not cheap. No, these are expensive, and you have to pay the monthly fee for the services, which are usually $40 to $50. Also, the web pages are really scaled down. It's limited. You're not going to get the full interactive experience. Mm -hmm. They're not very fast. You get a much slower experience loading pages. And the coverage, not everywhere. We talked about that specifically with PalmNet. That can be a real issue. It can be an issue with most of them. They're in most, most major cities, but once you go out to the countryside or smaller cities, you may not be able to get a signal, in which case they're about useful as a telescope in a coal mine. There is information about all this stuff, especially the information about what the coverage is and where you can find uh, a, a service provider for your wireless needs. That's all on our website. You can go to techtv.com slash call for help. And there's an article there that will be linked to that Rich Bagley wrote. And we appreciate his help from PC World Magazine.